Welcome to a hidden gem from TMS Software. To me, this is one of the most hidden component packs or components that you can find in the TMS product world. Honestly, Bruno Ferenc had to point it out to me in order for me to find it. And after looking at it, I was so miserable that I haven't found it before that I thought, well, this has to be a separate video for everybody in the TMS world on the TMS channel to be aware of this hidden gem so that you can make use of it right now. It is part of the VCL UI pack, but it is also available separately. So before we get started, let's give you the product area, what param controls can do. You've used them yourself, most likely, because if you've used a mail application that allows you to filter or to create rules, that's exactly what these param controls give you the ability to build very easily. It allows you to build a text or a list of parameters that the user can easily amend, be it that it's just a list of possible choices, being selecting a date or selecting a range, and the param controls make it so easy for you to build these parts of your application. And also what makes them so wonderful is that it's very easy to question the value of the params that have been chosen, but also to design how the parameters are presented. So before I open an example, let's find them first. They're pretty obvious in the tool palette in the TMS param category. And there's four parameter controls in total, the list box, the checklist, the label, and the tree view. And today I want to focus on the list box. And as I said, you can use it to build rules or to build selections for the user out of clear text. Also think about query builders. Think about a SQL statement when you want to give your users the ability to build a filter for database records. Parameter controls are the number one choice for that. In order to get started, select the list box parameter control, drop it on the form and double click it. This is where you might get a little bit overwhelmed in the beginning. However, it is really, really simple. On the left, you can select the different items of your list box, or if you have a checklist, the checklist box, and if you have a tree view, the items of the tree view. So you add a new item, and then here on the right, you can specify HTML. And this is what makes the parameter controls so great. You can use HTML. It's a little bit of a smaller HTML dialect. It doesn't have like support for style sheets. TMS refers to it as mini HTML, which is properly documented in all their documentation. But you have the standard controls, but you have the standard tags like bold, italic, underline, alignment, inserting links, inserting images, switching the color, these kind of things. Enumerations, lists, indentations, and so on. So for business applications, this is literally all you need. And then you can type away your HTML, for example, select H range. And on the bottom, you see the preview of what your parameter control is generating. So at this point, you want to give the user the opportunity to select the age range. And for that, we have a parameter insertion wizard right here where you can input parameter info. The parameter name is the most important because that is what you use to reference the parameter in code. So I'm going to name it age range right here. And the parameter value, this is the value, the default value that is supposed to be shown when the component is shown for the first time. So let's say 20 to 30 is the default range. And then you can also present a hint if you hover over the parameter, we're not gonna do that. Then the type, and this is the strength of the parameters. You have an edit control, spin edit, mask edit, time, date, you have a drop down list. You can even show a pop up menu. You can display a directory picker if you want to ask for a certain directory. You can open up a different input query dialog. You can write your own editor class, kind of like what you can do with the grids from TMS. You can select a link or a toggle. Let's just start with something simple a drop down list. And the reason why I picked a drop down list is because now you need to be able to specify all the different ranges. So you can say younger than 
20. You can say 20 to, 20 to 30, which is also our default value. And then you can say older than 30. Let's keep it simple. Let's not pick more than three. Okay. And at that point, the control automatically renders the preview for you right here. And we see that it might be beneficial to have a space after the range. So here we type the space. And as the age is pretty important, I double click on that and make it bold. And that's it. We click the check mark. And here we have our query control. And if we run this at runtime, it looks exactly the same. The user can click on the 20 to 30, select younger than 20, select older than 30. That's it. You can build your own queries this easily. Of course, you can have multiple parameters in an item and you can have multiple items. I've prepared a simple example which shows a little bit more of the param list. The scenario here is that we want to filter records and I have three different criteria. One is the property that I want to sort by, then I want to restrict the age, and then I also want to restrict the listing to the records that have been created after a certain date. So I need a drop down for the property. And then I also want to have ascending or descending order, which is another list. Then I want to be able to say over, under, and then I want to give the user the ability to select the age. So this is very, very flexible. Consider building a dialogue for this. This is the true power of this. You can say over, under, and then a value. If you double click on the control, you see how easy it is to build these. First type your text like here, so by, then we insert a parameter. So parameters are inserted using HTML as well. And in this case, we use the link, the A HTML tag for it. And the first parameter specifies the name of the parameter. So href attribute means the parameter that we define has the name attribute. Then the class. Again, we want to offer the user the opportunity to either sort by name, zip code, or by age. So in this case, we have yet another drop down list box, which is the class list. You will find a list of all the different classes in the product documentation. From there, we also specify a default value, and the default value is specified in between the A tag. So in this case, the default value is name. Next, we want to be able to select either ascending or descending order. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is we name the parameter order. List is yet again the class and the properties are named ascending. This separated by a pipe symbol and descending. And the default is ascending. The next list item will not determine the sort order, but will restrict the records that are being shown. In this case, we want to restrict the age of the people. We want to either over or under, and then we want to give the user the ability to edit a value. So in this case, we have a list like before with the name restrict, and we have a value that we reference with the name years, and the class for this is edit. I didn't use a mask in it, which could also be used in this case to limit the characters entered to digits. Finally, we also have a date. So the date that we want to use as a filter criterion is the class date, and then we have a default date in this case. With that, we're done. We can click the check mark and we can run the application to see how comfortable we now can select all the different parameters. So here, let's sort by H in descending order and only list people under 30 years. And consider records created only after, and here I go to May 1st, 2022. Final part, of course, that you need to know about is how can you interact with this control in order to get these values. Again, TMS makes it very, very easy. The list box is named filter, and then if we invoke code completion, and then you see all the properties that either have, are called parameter or have the keyword param in them. You have the ability to edit parameters, look up parameters, and also retrieve the values of a parameter. 
The easiest thing you can do is you say filter.parameter and then you name the parameter that you want to read. The value is always returned as a string. So that makes it really, really easy to display the number for years entered in a shell message here. So running the application, display age, and it says 18. If we change the value to 30, display again, we see 30. It is also very error prone. So let's say you pick a name that doesn't exist. For example, yes, we don't have a parameter. Yes, you simply get an empty string in this case. So you easily can handle mistakes by specifying the wrong parameter. So specifying a wrong parameter doesn't cause an exception. Instead, you get an empty string. Of course, this is not where the story ends. You can create your parameter list dynamically at runtime. That is the key thing to remember. You're able to build these parameter list boxes easily by constructing strings and then showing them much easier than generating a form in the VCL using all the different controls. Also, the parameter list box, checklist, label, and tree view automatically render perfectly so that the parameters entered are presented in a way that the user can select and enter values easily. I hope that after this video, you share my enthusiasm for these great components. You can find yet another detailed, interesting blog post about these controls from Bruno Ferenc. The URL is right here. The control featured in this video is the TPRAM list box. You can find it here on the page. You can even purchase it separately. However, it is also included in the VCL UI pack, which is most likely a better bargain than buying the components separately.